compared to the modern faith teachers such as Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, Essek Kenyon was actually fairly orthodox. William Branham was a father of the post-World War II healing revival movement. He's the one that really began the tent healing revivals. And uh, Branham was heavily influenced by the cults. He proclaimed himself to be the angel of Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, just read himself in scripture, Proph prophesied that all the denominations would be consumed by the World Council of Churches. This would happen in 1977, just before the rapture and the destruction of the world. Well, guess what didn't happen? Kenneth Hagin Sr. is the father of the modern Word of Faith movement. All the faith teachers appeal to Hagin Sr. They affectionately refer to him as Dad Hagin. Much of what Hagin taught, he, it's almost like he knew that his doctrines couldn't be substantiated with Scripture. So he said, well, if you can't find these in Scripture, that's okay, because I've received them from the highest authority. Jesus himself taught me these things. So if you can't plummet with the Word of God, that's okay. Jesus told me himself, and as we'll see in the full sessions, this is something that all of the faith teachers do. Just a couple of clips, hit a few high points. Consider this clip, assortment of clips of the doctrine of positive confession, the belief that we can speak things into existence. Look at me, say, 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 all, all of you, say, there's power in me, power in me. to speak life and death. You call what you have, you say what you want. And I'm here to tell you, I know that I know that I know that as these programs are airing, I am speaking something into existence. Amen. I'm speaking something into existence. If that sounds eerily like God's act of creation in Genesis 1 and 2, that's because it is. The following clip is one of the more bizarre ones dealing with positive confession. This from Gloria Copeland. You know, you're the you're supposed to control the weather. I mean, Ken's the primary weatherman at our house, but when he's not there, I do it. He can see what's happening out there. It shows just like they have on at the weather, like on the news. I mean, he's got the computers, got the current weather on it, and all that for flying. So. Uh, Sometimes I'll hear something. I'll hear the thunder start. Maybe he'll still be asleep. And I say, Ken, you need to do something about this. <laughs> and knowing that, but you are the one that has authority over the weather. One day, Ken and Pat Boone, well, we were in Hawaii at their house, and we were, they were sitting outside, and there was a weather spout out over the ocean. And that's like a tornado except it hits the water. And so they were sitting there and they just watched it, rebuked it, never did anything. One day, I was in the airplane in the back and my little brother was in the back with me and Ken was up front flying. And we were not in the weather because we don't fly bad weather. But we, we could see the weather over here. And I looked out the window and that tornado came down just like this, down toward the ground. And Ken said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You get back up there. So this is how I learned how to talk to tornadoes. I saw this. And that tornado went, whoop, 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 whoop. Even while I was watching it, my little brother was not a devout Christian at that time, and that was really good for him to see. So you're the weatherman. You get out there, or the weather woman, whichever it is, and you talk to that thing, and you tell it, you're not coming here. I command you to dissipate. And you get back up there in Jesus' name. Glory to God. That, that, I won't charge you extra. It almost doesn't even need any comment. Of, <laughs> aside from the absurdity of it, there is something a little more sinister at work here. She says she can speak to tornadoes and make them dissipate. Does it remind you of someone else who one day was in a boat with his disciples and a storm came up and he spoke to the storm and calmed it. You see one of the fundamental, one of the many fundamental problems of the Word of Faith movement is they blur what should be a very crisp line of distinction between God the Creator and us His created. They make God look a lot more human than what He is and they deify man making us look, like, look a lot more like God than what we really are which is a good segue into the Little God's Doctrine. Listen to this exposition from Creflo Dollar on Genesis chapter 1, 
26 and 27. Now, in verse 26 and verse 27, God now submits himself to this principle of everything producing after its own kind. And in verse 26 and 27, let's read it out loud. Ready? Read. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now that's interesting because if everything produces after its own kind, we now see God producing man. And if God now produces man, and everything produces after its own kind, if horses get together, they produce what? And if dogs get together, they produce what? If cats get together, they produce what? But if the Godhead gets together and say, let us make man, then what are they producing? They're producing gods. Now I got to hit this thing real hard in the very beginning because I ain't got time to go through all this. But I'm going to say to you right now, you are gods, little g. You are gods because you came from God and you are gods. You're not just human. The only human part about you is this physical body that you live in. The real me is just like God. The real me is just like God. Friends, we're not talking about the author of Hebrews or the date of the Exodus. These are issues that go to the heart of Orthodox Christianity. If they preach a different father, if they preach a different Jesus, they preach a different gospel. Briefly, let, us, let me give you an overview of the Word of Faith teachings on the fall, and this will help you understand this movement. Number one, the faith teachers hold that Adam was an exact duplicate of God. Not a lot like God, he was a carbon copy of God. And according to Kenneth Hagin, Adam could stand before Yahweh without any consciousness of inferiority. He was Yahweh. God reproduced himself in Adam. Then Adam sinned, which, of course, begs the question. If Adam was Yahweh and he sinned, was it Yahweh who sinned? You see, when you carry these teachings out to their logical conclusions, you see how very dark and heretical they are. But when Adam sinned, supposedly, he lost his deity transferred his deity to Satan. Satan became the legal god of this world, and when that happened, Yahweh God was kicked out, banished from the earth. And now Yahweh is up there somewhere, but he has no access to the earth. Satan becomes the legal god of this world, and we will see in the full session why 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 does not teach this. And when a person is saved, guess what he or she gets back? We get our deity back. And dear friends, this is why the faith teachers hold so tenaciously to health and wealth.